special edition of Knicks Fan TV. CP on the check-in. Tonight's guest spent 13 years in the league, 13-year veteran. Five with the Knicks from 05 to 09, as well as the 2012-2013 Knicks Take Team. One half of the best podcast in the game, the Knuckleheads Podcast. Quentin Richardson in the building, a.k.a. Q Rich. Q, thanks for giving me some time, man. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. So, you know what? I want to start this off knucklehead style as we kind of, you know, talk about your journey and, and your time with the Knicks. First, I got I to gotta hear who was the first player to bust your ass in the league, man, as a rookie coming in. <laughs> I've told this before, man, but it was uh, it was Vashon Leonard. Vashon Leonard when he was in Denver. So, you know, I, I, I got drafted to the Clippers, obviously West Coast team, so... That preseason, um, I got I got a chance to start. You know how they do sometimes, get you throw a rookie out there, let them start or whatever. So I get to start. It's at Denver. And you know, I'm not, you know, I'm a young kid, oblivious really. I'm like, man, whatever, this was Sean Lennon. I'm taking it lightly. I'm like, I'm about to, you know, I'm about to do my thing. Yeah. And that first six minute timeout, Buckets. Came to the bench. That man had 17 <laughs> points. <laughs> I'm talking about giving me everything. Everything. I you know, the out between the altitude that I was not prepared for. And yeah. then just this game, I wasn't respecting this game the right way. And yeah. he came up and tuned the young fella right up real quick. And yeah. he was the first one to give it hey, to him. Hey, I got to I gotta tell you, as a member, when he played for the Heat, because you know Knicks and Heat was bitter rivals. So yeah. when Riley went over there and built a carbon copy of the Knicks there, but Sean Leonard used to give us buckets, you know, three-pointers after three-pointers. He, 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 he one of them ones that really, you know, don't why talk a lot about, but he yeah. gave a lot of people buckets. Buckets, buckets, man. That That's hilarious. So, so you spent four years with the Clippers. Short year with the Phoenix Suns, that offensive juggernaut with, you know, D'Antoni, Steve Nash, Stat, the Matrix, everybody else. And one day you, you pick up the phone and, and you trade it to the Knicks, man. What was that day like for you? How did you hear and, and what was your reaction? Yo, let me tell you, I was pissed. <laughs> no <laughs> lie. It was, it, was, it was crazy, though, because I was literally in New York when it wow. happened. Yeah. So... I get I get the call. I was there doing a, I was doing a Jordan um shoot. Mm. I was shooting a um I was shooting a commercial. It was when um Common Common had got on the little campaign. It was a part of it, and it was like me, Terrell Lowens, and Melo. Yeah, we did like the uh we did a video in Brooklyn for Common's song. I think Go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um he was part of the whole thing, and we did the one hundred six. So I'm there for like four days, four or five days. And I get the call like in the in the um toward the end of that trip. And I'm like, so you gotta understand at the time, the context, we just had the best record in the seat in the league when I was with Phoenix that year, and the yeah. Knicks had the first record. Yeah. So I I essentially went from you worst, know what I'm saying? Like, first to worst. From, yeah, first to worst. <laughs> and I was sitting there like it was one of the most fun seasons I had had in the league. That was my first time being a part of a winning, you know, team and mm -hmm. going to the playoffs and going that far. And I felt like I had one year that it got shipped back, back to the bottom. I was like, you know, and I'll tell you the biggest thing that was the big, like, I'll tell you what was probably more disappointing than anything to me. So that whole year when I first moved, I signed, I signed a six year deal, right? Mm -hmm. So, I bought a house and I started wow. building a house. I was building a, 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 a crazy house. So yeah. while I'm building that house, I was living in like a little rental house that was not far. So every day I had to practice on the way home, I'll slide by, see the crib, see how it's going. Fill it in a little bit. Bruh, <laughs> that trade happened like two, like when I got back, they were supposed to have the swimming pool full, you know, uh, yeah. putting the water in the, in the pool. And I was yeah. like, right, I'm gonna go, go over there, kick it, whatever. Never even went back. Never even went Damn. to see it. Get rid of it. Like I was like, yo, like that, Damn. that right there. That was I, I, man. That was that hurt for a long time. Yeah. No lie. That that part of the business has to get tough, man. Like, cause do you ever feel like whenever you go to a team, you could really be all the way comfortable? Like, how you even you know navigate that? I think for me, after you know, after after. The, the Phoenix to New York deal happened. I was just, you know, even though I stayed in New York the whole time, the rest of the way, I, I played the deal out that um, from that point. But like, 
for me, it was just like, it was crazy. It was like, damn. Yeah. Like I really was like locking in with Phoenix and then it was like, boom. And so for me then at that point, it was like, especially in New York, cause it was so tumultuous. I, I always yeah. felt like anything could happen after that. True, true story, man. Um, So when you get to the Knicks, is there, you know, you played four years plus Knicks tape. Is there one game or, or moment, you know, at MSG that really sticks out to you as, as your favorite? Uh, I can't even really say just one, man. I yeah. just know, you know, for me, it was it. I'll never forget those games where, you know, like, cause the garden is a special place mm -hmm. and, the, and New York city has a way of showing up and, and showing out like when the greats come through and when, when the special players come through. So for me, it was, it was, for, you know, for the longest time coming in, I always want to play well there. Then when I, once I became a Nick for me, it was like, it was a different take on it. Like, okay, I know what it feel like for guys to want to come here and what they want to do. I felt, you know, like I want to, I want to like protect this house. Like when I'm here, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. want to make it hard as hell on whoever it is, whether it was, you know, Carmelo before he came to the Knicks or LeBron or, or Kobe or whoever, like I'm gonna fight tooth and nail to try my best to protect not let the them have so, Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, for me that was, those were, were always memorable nights because it would be jam packed. You would have, you know, a lot of the other teams fans and it would be, it would have that vibe that you that you live to play for, where it's the whole crowd is jumping. Like, forget about what our record is tonight because it's mm -hmm. it's 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 one of them nights. And like, those were the nights I love. The energy of M MSG is unmatched, man. You you definitely right. right on that. And uh, you know, I had JC on, I had Channing Fry on, and I had to ask him the same question. I'm gonna ask you is Hello. is they, See, yeah, man, a... those, those my guys, those my guys. You know, but. I liked what Isaiah was putting on paper, you know, bringing in Steph. I, I remember when he brought in Steph, I was such a, a huge Steph fan. That was one of the greatest days in my fandom. You, JC, Eddie Curry, you know, drafting Nate Channing, D. Lee. I like what Isaiah, I liked his vision, but it just never really moved the needle. Like, what, what would you say was the reason behind um, the lack of success for those teams? You know, we talk about this all the time. It was just... It was, I, I, I 100%, especially being removed from it and looking at hindsight, I could see what Isaiah was doing. Yeah. It just, it just, no, not, none of us knew at the time that it wasn't the right time. It was like for everybody, for whatever reason, everybody went through a lot of stuff during those times mm. and then things changed from that point. But if you look at those individuals that he brought in, if you would have brought that group together, and like I say, in, in real time, nobody knows this, but if you would have brought that group together a year or two earlier, while everybody was in a different place, mm -hmm. who knows what would have happened? Or if just things wouldn't have went the way they went while we were there. Cause yeah. it was like, if people really knew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was heavy, it was heavy stuff going up. Yo, I'm talking about on so many levels, so Damn. many different directions, so many different ways. It was crazy. Damn. And so like, it was that, like all of those things playing to what was going on. And when we look back on it, like, like I talk to Nate, Eddie and those boys all the time and, and Channing too. And it's like, we laugh and talk about it like, yo, we could, we was supposed, like I just had Steve Francis on the other yeah. day. We was talking about it. We, it's like, we should have been way better than we, and then when we talk about it, like, yo, we'll say that in one breath, then be like, yo, it was, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> it was just so it was like, it's like, yeah. it's like, I'm telling you, man. And it's like, you know, none of us are those type of people to really come out and say, yo, it was all, but if anybody ever did, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Do you yeah. hear me? So Do you hear me? <laughs> oh, don't nothing need to be sensationalized. We yeah. don't need Hollywood. We don't need nothing. It is just, everything just, just the facts similar. alone will blow you oh. away. Man, that man, that, that, man, that's crazy, man. And and it's also crazy because you know when I listen to the Knucklehead's podcast, and um, part of the reason I love it so much is the stories that some of the former Knicks come on and tell. Um, to a man, everybody vouched for Isaiah, you know, and then from a fan perspective, we looking at it from the outside in and the media is just trashing him, you know, the, the L's is piling up and the stories is piling up, so on and so forth. But it seemed like to a man, you know, especially with you, you know, it seemed like Isaiah really helped you through some dark times. Um, but it just seems like, you know, again, like you said, with so much piling up, it just seems like there was so much forces that the structure, as Steve Francis said, just just wasn't there to help you guys right the ship. Would you agree with that? 
Yeah, man, for me, like, I say this all the time. Like, even, you know, I work at Turner, uh, worked at Turner with, with Zeke and stuff like that. And even before I ever played for the Knicks or anything, Isaiah was a big homie to all of us in Chicago. We mm -hmm. all grew up looking up to him. He, he was the dude, the guy. And so for me, before, during, after, now, no one will ever hear me say anything bad about Z. Mm. Like, like I say, what he did for me and my family during the toughest time in my life, and then just like everything else, I'm not here to fight nobody else's battles that they got with. Them. I'm talking about me and how I feel about it. Nobody will never hear me say anything bad about Z. Love him to death, one of the best yeah. people, all of that. That's true. That's real, man. Um, some of the stories that came out of Knuckleheads podcast, you know, Nate putting the X lax in Eddie Curry cereal, or Dolan making a hype tape for for you guys using his band as the cover. Um, you know, Steve Francis, you know, being the talk of the city and and really embracing New York. A any other funny stories from that time that that you able to share? Man, listen, it's it listen <laughs> that we able to share. <laughs> It's just, it's just, man, listen, people don't understand, like, Jerome James, Malik Rose, man, like, those teams were, like, and I'm telling you, like, it, you know, they we were what we were. Our record was what it was. It, mm -hmm. was, it was some of the toughest times, but it, it, the craziest thing is, like, some of my best friendships and closest friendships are from those guys. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, we talk all the time from, from, whether it's City, whether it's Eddie, whether it's Nate, like Nate is everybody's little brother that they never had, even if they didn't want him. I don't care. Like that, like that's my little bro forever. Like, and you know, Channing, mm -hmm. all of those types of them different relationships, and you don't realize it. Like, people think one way about Channing Fry. And if they only knew, yeah. like if they only knew, yeah. like everybody should love and enjoy the national treasure that is yeah. Channing Fry. I'm going to just leave it at that. I'll tell you, I certainly learned myself, but having him on the show and just, you know, how candid he was with me, man, I really enjoyed that interview with Cannon Fry. He's a funny guy. He's uh, definitely he's a funny hilarious. guy. Another thing I loved about you, Q, was, uh, as you said, you were signed to Jordan. The player editions are always fire. And, and you know, with Knicks fans and Jordans, it's always a conflict. Some Knicks fans are like, ah, I never wear no Jordan. Me, I don't care, man. I got a, I got a box load of uh, Jays in, in, the, in the closet right now. The 11s being my favorite. Which one of the Knicks player editions um, was your go-to? Whew. Now, see, I spent, I feel like the Knicks were some of my most prolific years as far as, like, footwear and, yeah. and, and, and PEs because I feel like it was that sweet spot where they was really going hard at it. Cause you know, in my early years in LA, my last two years kind of caught where they were starting to do the PEs a lot. And mm -hmm. then my year in Phoenix was crazy, but New York, man, I had some heat. I had some serious some heat. heat bro. <laughs> I, had some, I had some points in New York, but I, my favorites, like I still got some of these to this day. I had I had the two, the retro twos yeah. with the Q Rich on the side, and then the fives. I had some five, five right. that was fire. But the only only thing I wish about back then is that I, I had a different number. I, I wish I still was like number three or number five. Mm. Cause 23, 23 make it yeah. look like they just regular J. Yeah, it's it's true. Good. Cause on the fives, he didn't. They didn't do like no Q original. They just did my our numbers, so it just looked like they was the regular demos. Regular Jays, yeah. But like they was, they was still crowd. When I when I came back and at the end in twelve thirteen, like mm -hmm. I had all of that heat to pull out. So mm -hmm, like you mm -hmm. know, I had young boy Shump and and Swish, and them was like yo. Like, <laughs> I, I, had, I was pulling out all type of old flavors. Like yeah. even Flo was like, oh okay, I see you, I see you. For for me, it was the eights. For me, it was oh, yeah. was the eights. They, they still sell them joints for like yeah. some 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 money out there. Yeah. Cause they actually, you know what? The eights was the one shoe that they actually came out at House of Hoops with when I was here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when I was in New York. So that that was a pretty pretty popular one because people could actually get it too. Yeah, true yeah. indeed, man. True indeed. And and you know, in a recent interview, you had talked about you know what it was like in, in playing for New York and, and the pressures of uh, playing for the city and the potential impacts that might have in, you know, free agents coming or, you know, how the rookies and stuff get treated. How, how do you feel like you were able to kind of navigate that pressure of playing in New York, dealing with fans who, you know, have lofty expectations? How do you feel like you were able to deal with that? 
man, I'm from Chicago, bro. Like straight up, like that was the way I looked at looked at everything. That was the way I approached, you know what I'm saying, life in general. And whenever, whether it was when I was in LA being drafted out there, when I played in every city I went to, I always took my Chicago mentality. I would, I'm never gonna do something in any other city that I wouldn't do in my own. Yeah, you know, what I'm, I'm not gonna try and go to New York and start acting different. So for me. And you know, I don't, I don't ever claim to like have lit, lit, lit the city on fire as far as when I was playing. Those weren't some of my best years. You know, I've talked about that openly, and you know, I was going through what I went through. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as like never succumbing to the pressures of you know all of the the stuff that come with New York, like I just that's not the type of person I am, man. I'm, I, I, you know, what I'm saying I was mentally built different. Yeah, being from where I from and, and, and went what I went through growing up, like <laughs> fans booing or <laughs> saying something to me wasn't gonna like ruin my day. It wasn't gonna yeah. make me not wanna go out to eat or go out to the club or do whatever, or just live my life. It was, nobody was gonna hold that type of power of me. And I, that's why when I speak on that, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen people come to New York and shut it down. Like, oh hell no, nah. like they don't even want to exist no more because it's like, Every move you make is gonna be talked about and this, that, and third, and it's either you either care or you don't. And it's not a it's not a I don't care to the point where I'm just gonna be reckless. It's like I'm I'ma always be, you know, straightforward and be trying to handle my business the right way. Never nobody's gonna be perfect, but I'm for the most part I'm be trying to handle my business the right way. But like I don't care what, what certain people think. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You're not the president or the GM or a coach or you know what I'm saying, like yeah. I'm not trying to impress you, bro. Yeah. Like I'm gonna do what I know is right and try and move the right way. But other than that, and I think the other thing, you know, even with me not playing hard and, you know, gaining weight and doing all that stuff, like when I went out there, I played hard as shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was with it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Whether whoever it was, I wasn't backing down from nobody. I felt like that the city could relate to that mentality. Yeah, like the, I'm, a, I'm a hard worker, I'm blue collar. I might not be the most talented, the best this or the best that, but like, you're not gonna disrespect me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, you either gonna give me my respect or I'm gonna take it and you gonna, you know what I'm saying? You gonna acknowledge that I'm here. And you know what I'm saying? That's just, I'm gonna just demand that. that that's a fact. And, and you know, it's those type of plays that the city really gravitates to. You know what I mean? And I got a confession for you, Q. I, I, put, I tested your patience 10 years ago, man. I've been waiting 10 years to tell you this story. Okay. April 11, 2010. Knicks Two versus days. Heat. My birthday. Knicks versus Heat at MSG. I'm riding around the city. The plug calls me, say, yo, I got two tickets to the game. I'm like, all right, cool. Last minute, call the homie up. I'm like, let's go to the game. They playing the Heat. Let's go. It's our rivals. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, we, all right, let's go. Get down there. Go to the wheel call, pick up the tickets. Oh, we right behind the heat bench. Okay, let's go to war. We ready to go. We get down there, start ordering drink. We two rows behind the, the bench now. So right. we start ordering drinks. We getting nice. So we're like, all right, we, we talking trash. Who we going to trash talk? Now nah, I can't trash talk D-Wade. He going to kill us anyway. So we look over. I'm like, yo, we got to get Q. <laughs> so we said, it was nothing personal. You know, it's just a rivalry. We there getting right. nice. So I'm like, yo, we got to go, go at Q. So the whole game, we talking trash. Q, you ain't got it no more. Oh, that's off. We talking to T, because T-Mac is on the Knicks at this time. So every time right. T-Mac get the ball, we like, T-Mac, dunk on Quentin Richardson. He don't got it no more. This That's easy money all day talking trash. We had the whole bench going. We he, Carlos Arroyo was cracking up because we was just cracking yeah. jokes all day. Mm -hmm. So finally, I think it was either a timeout when you came out the game. We still talking to you, still talking. And finally, you, you looked over at us like, yo, why y'all still talking to me? <laughs> so I said, I looked back. I was like, yo, Q, I don't know, man, but I really just want to connect on those Jordans, bro. Those Jordan player editions are fire, bro. Can you just, just hook us up? Yo, I swear to God, Q, this is a true story, bro, from 10 years ago. So... Yeah, man. Nothing personal. You know what I'm saying? You still my guy, so especially when you play for the Knicks. But, uh, you know, just, just being a typical uh, obnoxious Knicks troll 10 years hey, ago, man. That's good. I kept a PG right there. You know? yeah. <laughs> we must have won that game. I had to be they in did. a good mood. Yeah, they did. They hey, did. Yeah. They did, man. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a memorable time, man. Memorable time. But, um, yeah, but, you know, just going back to that. You know, Chuck D always talks about MSG being a microwave and, and the Nick Jersey being the heaviest in the league. And, 
you know, when we draft these players, a lot of times when I talk to fans, they, they talk about it not just being about talent, but being mentally tough. Because it's, mm-hmm. it's just such a tough place to play. It's a, it's a mentality, man. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like, people like, you know, look at look at Derek Jeter and the whole yeah. way he was viewed and then the rod, A-Rod. Mm-hmm, like, it was mm-hmm. like, you have to be built a certain type of way. Like, even, I don't care, even with when you making the most money, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people still don't have fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they not, if you're not prepared to stand in front of that media scrum and it'd be, it be triple or quadruple what it is in some cities. And, yeah. and you know what I'm you got way more uh, crazy and more venomous questions coming at you where you might not get none of that down here in Orlando mm-hmm. or Oakland, Charlotte or wherever else. But like when you were, this is New York, like it's 20 different reporters and everybody don't want the same good story. You know what I'm sure. saying? Like, I'm sorry, that's just not the way it works here in the big city. Yeah. That, and I found that out quickly. And so, you know, for me, I, that's why I look at it when you, when everybody say, that's why it's hard for me to sit there and put the blame on Dolan and just say, oh, it's just Dolan, it's just Dolan. Like, nah, bro. Mm. Like, people see, people know what's going on, yeah. whether they say it or not. Like, people like, look, man, I'm trying to have, a, I'm trying to, whatever point you get pointed at, uh, they could have career they in, they trying to enjoy it. Yeah. Now, the flip side of that, that I always say too, it's the, it's the double-edged sword. Like, yeah, it's hard. But but yo, watch that one who come in there and say I want it, and come in there and really deliver it. He King. will be legend forever, legend. like forever. Yeah. And I'm yeah. talking about everywhere. Like when somebody choose and come do it in New York, they name gonna ring across yeah. the world. They gonna be the biggest endorsement, biggest everything. True, everything. And whoever else on that team gonna live on forever, yeah. whether they stars or not. You gonna have. That's you know, fact, eight, man. ninth, tenth men being working forever because they was part of that team that was winning and that, that, that was love. It's like, that's just what it is. When New York Knicks are good, the NBA is just that much more better. 100% facts, man. Couldn't have said it better myself. Knuckleheads podcast, man. How, how did that start when you and D-Miles starting the podcast? Man, so, you know, me and D both had, uh, we, did, we did articles. So this whole thing is kind of like, a, a Knicks reunion, kind of, so to speak. So my <laughs> man, my man Chris Bernard, whom I met, he worked for the Knicks forever, mm. uh, and um, it's crazy because Coach Cliff was his was his college coach. Oh wow! Full circle. So it's crazy. Yeah. It's a whole full yeah, circle. yeah. Like so, once once Chris Bernard left from working with the Knicks, he went over to the Players Tribune. Mm. So that was how many years ago? So you fast forward to a few years back. Um, I did a I did a uh in conjunction with the show, uh, The Shy, that was coming out, mm-hmm. you know, the show mm-hmm. out in the audience on Showtime, and it was first about the launch. They did a partnership with Players Tribune, and they wanted to do a, a story about a Chicago, somebody from Chicago telling their story about, you know, being in Chicago, whatever. So I did a letter to my younger self, and mm-hmm. that did really well, got a good response, so then, I talked to D Miles and he, you know, they were trying to get him to do a piece on himself, on, on, on him. And so when I had him um, do it, I was like the executive co whatever you call the co-writer or whatever. And mm-hmm. um, they got the chance to see uh, our chemistry. And so they was like, Chris, like, man, we need to do something. We need to, we need to come up with something we gotta do. Y'all got a chemistry, everybody's saying this and that. So we was playing around with stuff and we came up with the podcast and it was like, D Miles wanted no parts of it. <laughs> like yeah. camera, microphone. He like, nah, I'm He's good. Not with it. So I had it took some persuading and some posturing with that. But then we ended up taking uh doing we did a pilot right here on my patio. So mm. D Miles lives in Orlando now. And my neighbor is literally Drew Gooden, who mm. played in the league. So mm. he's there right across the street. So we like, man, we're gonna do it. We we gonna use Drew as the little uh the, the guest for the pilot, so it's me, D Miles, and Drew. We do the pilot, man. We get over here. It was like, it was crazy. We drinking. It was just it seemed like to us. It was like drink like, champs. <laughs> right. It was like, it was like, crazy. Like you know, yeah. this is the first time we ever do it. We ain't got no. We well, we was drinking too much. We we drinking, yelling, cursing, everything. <laughs> so they get the, they get the tape back. They like, oh, this was. They like this was crazy. They like. <laughs> But it was good though. They was like, I mean, we need to clean some stuff yeah. up and do some, and you know, channel this and, 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 and you know, kind of structure stuff. But like, this could be really good. Like we like, 
you know, first we gotta, y'all can't drink as much. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't curse as much. Either. Like, you know, so we, we, we kind of sat down and got back to the drum board and, and me and D drew lines in the sand about the, the direct directions and stuff and the way we wanted it to be. And man, we just pushed forward. We didn't really, you know, know how it was gonna go, but I mean, the response has been, you know, more than we could ever dreamed about. It's been yeah. crazy. Yo, it's, it's been great, man. And just hearing all the war stories and storytelling from guys that, you know, like the Sean Kemp one was one of my favorites of recent because it's just like, everybody like, yo, where's Sean Kemp been? You know what I mean? So to hear him come in and tell the stories, you know, how Larry Bird busted his ass and how he became the Ray Man and just Seattle basketball on the whole. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I thought the Sean Kemp interview was great. I think my favorite all time was, was definitely uh, Kobe. I, oh, yeah. I, I think I think Kobe's was definitely my favorite because, again, at that time, as he transitioned from the end of the game, you saw a different side of him that he was revealing, you know, and, and him really taking you through his journey, you know, on, mm -hmm. on your episode in particular, just being at high school or coming up in the game and how he had to learn from certain players and how he had to be humbled. And then the 61 point game at the garden, you know, breaking it down, how he studied Wilson Chandler and his tendencies. And um, I thought the Kobe one was just great, you know, just from a basketball standpoint and as a man, just really starting to learn who he was, you know, taking that veil off from the black mamba and just, you know, more personal, you know, seeing a more personal side of him. Um, just tragic that we lost him, but definitely one of my favorite ones. No, nah, all of us, but you know that was that was definitely a special one. Cause like I say, you know, when you play in the game, man, everybody know like I don't care who you was when when any time and within the years like twenty, what did he play? Twenty, twenty one. How many years he played when he was in the NBA? I don't care who was the MVP. I don't care who was this. That was like he was the new Jordan. Like yeah. he was the guy. You wanted him to know who you were. You wanted him to acknowledge you. You wanted him like not on some, not on some, you know, kiss, you know, kissing his butt type mm -hmm, stuff, mm -hmm. but just like you want the best to know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so it was like for, for, for me and Dee to get a chance to do that and get a chance to holler at him and really see, like, okay, Cole rocked with us. He respect us. You know what I'm saying? Like that was that was dope from that standpoint mm -hmm. and everything that went into it. But I mean, like you said, for us to get Sean Kim, like us, we kind of pride ourselves in getting like them Loch Ness monsters, them guys yeah. that you don't, you don't really hear from, you don't right. really, really talk to. Like this week though. Oh, you got this, this week. week? I ain't gonna tell you, but this <laughs> week though, this week we got a, we hey, this Bigfoot right here. You okay. Don't, don't is it him. is it MJ? I, I know MJ got to be on your list. It, it got to be on the bucket list. If we get MJ, we just gonna drop the mic. Don't <laughs> I know that. you and MJ <laughs> close, so I'm, I'm sure you had to reach out to him already. But you know, listen, we 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 get the MJ thing happening. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit that right there. And not <laughs> but like this week though, we got we got one of the one of the Bigfoot uh, Loch Ness monsters. Okay. This week, and I'm kidding. It is gonna be sick. This man sat down with us just over three hours. Damn. And, he, so, and when you see who he is, it's yeah. like. That man gave us three hours of his time and, and really let us know that he rocked with us yeah. and he rocked with what we're doing, like, blown away. Now, I'm looking blown forward to it. Lo lo looking forward to it, man. A um, couple more questions for you, Q. Definitely appreciate the time. You from Chicago, as you said. We, we talked about MJ. I uh, wasn't born there, but give me your top five NBA players out of the shot. Top five. Oh shit, you trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> Listen, man. Isaiah number one for sure. me. I don't like to go, I don't even like to do the number thing. I'm gonna just give you my yeah. favorite five. My yeah. favorite five out the out the shot. Zeke, D Wade, D Rose, Anthony Davis. And Twan Walker. I was just gonna ask. I said you gonna leave Twan out the mix because Twan uh, was a baller, man. Cyber Twan, Cyber Twan, come on, dog. That's yeah. my, that's my big dog now. So you gotta put Walls dog in there. People, how soon they forget? Yeah, nah, you can't that forget that. Bush your favorite players, yeah. Ass. Yeah, now, like Walk Dog gave yeah. everybody the business. And Antoine Walker was was a beast, man. I actually saw him um, after the Knicks versus Dallas game a couple years back. He was leave, leaving the game, so and shouted us out. So sh salute to Antoine Walker for sure, stand up guy. Um, last question for you, man. You know you spent 13 years in the league, number number of different teams. You you played with some of the greats. 
Um, and and your your basketball journey itself was was very heralded coming up through Chicago high school hoops and the Paul and again thirteen years in the league. H- how do you want to be remembered, man? What's the legacy of Q Rich look like? Man, listen. Um, at the end of the day, I, I I'm a I, I persevered. I feel like you know what I'm saying. I found myself at the end of my thirteen years. I still started games in my in my you know what I'm saying that year in the league. So. For me, I I came in as supposed to be a scorer, you know what I'm saying? Became a, a, a was like a post player, became a three point shooter. I, I just feel like I, I was somebody who was able to become whatever I needed to become. I was kind of like a chameleon. I was kind of you know able to recreate myself for, for whatever my coach needed me to be, and um, I took pride in that, man. I because like you know I, I survived 13 years, yeah. and I, I always knew that once I got in the league that they weren't going to get rid of me easy. I was going to stick around for a while. So I, I, I take pride in, you know, beating the odds. Like they say, the average amount of careers lasts like four years. Four years. So, four years. So I, I tripled that. And I always yeah. take pride in that when I go to speak to kids because it'd be funny. You know, everybody don't always know who you are. And I'd be like, that's yeah. cool. I want to start <laughs> right there because that's like, that's a good starting point. The yeah. fact that I'm here, they brought me here to talk to you and nice. you don't even know who I am. Like, nice. think about that. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a reason. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just start there with it. True, true story, man. And, and just as a quick addendum, um, who, who were some of your OGs that kind of helped you, you know, along your, your journey? Man, listen. People who, who like, really, who were examples to me. I mean, my, my, my biggest influence was my pops and my sister. That's mm-hmm. where I get my, my work ethic and, and my... Um, my go hard from and my 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 know how to work, but um, guys that I watched that I got a chance to be close up to and, and see how to do it in the right way it was done, I really really looked up to Mike Finley, big dog. Juwan, oh, you Juwan, you, you didn't put him in your top five. You didn't put Finn Dog in your top five, man. No, nah, but 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 trust me, yeah. People know Finn Finn and Jawan were like they were the picture for professionalism for mm, me. Like mm. I went to hoop the gym and worked out and you know, the legendary who's with Tim Grover and all that. Like yeah. my chunk of really going there, those were the two old, like I get that. I, I used to call them like Mike Lowry, like the bad boy. Yeah. Them boys, they was bad guy. They always gonna come in some type of exotic car that you ain't really seen. Yeah. And you ain't, you know, none of those young boys ain't. So I used to, you know, I get that eight, nine o'clock, they icing up, reading the newspaper, they through already. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's like, you know what I'm saying? They were just always, for me, they were that picture of, of professionalism, the way to do things the right way, the way to be in the community, the way to be on the court, the way to present yourself, the way to present the city. Mm-hmm. And so I always look at those two guys like, I want to, you know what I'm saying? I got to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to tuck my jersey in, like seeing like I got the, Got the fan tuck going yeah. today, like, you know what I'm saying? So like, them was them was my two OGs right there. Yeah. That, that's dope, man. That's dope. And as you say, 13 years in the game, that that's something to be proud of, man. As the average is, is four, you know, coming out of the shot. So that's a, that's a major accomplishment, man. But um, Q, I, I definitely appreciate all the time you, you gave and 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 the gems that you dropped, man. And looking forward to the next episode of Knuckleheads. And um, <laughs> what, what's your what's your final you know message to the to the Knicks fans out there? Man, I know it's hard, man. Be patient. Somebody coming, somebody going to choose. <laughs> hey, listen, because I'm telling you, whoever it is, whoever it is, like, I'm telling you, when they get it, it's over. It's that's over. It. All it takes is it's some young boy out there growing up right now that that's all they want to do is put the Knicks on, and, and y'all going to get y'all one. Oh, hopefully. Like you said, they'll, they'll be king, man. But but Q, thanks again, and uh, hopefully we can do this again soon, man. All right, man. Holla. Yes, yeah. sir. Knicks by nine. Good ball movement. Richardson a three. That's good. And the Knicks lead by 12, their largest lead of the first half. Shot clock at seven. Quinn Richardson off the dribble. Nice move from Richardson. Yeah, that's a tough shot. Knicks with the advantage and the basketball. Marbury gets the handoff on the right wing from Richardson, uses a Richardson screen. Now squares up on Sotomayor, drives, hits right corner for Richardson. Good spacing, and Richardson buries a three as the double team came. Nice drive and kick. Richardson now with 13. Seven on the top, on top to David Lee at the back. He's landing all the two hands. Five of the last seven between these two teams. 
And the Knicks trying for a measure of redemption after a season that saw them lose 20, lose 59 games. And another three by Quentin Richardson, his 